Hello everybody, Sam here, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's video, I wanna talk about Caribou's latest press release on March 29th. And of course, no video today. As you guys know, I'm in Montreal. So whenever I'm here, I think I'm just gonna take off my webcam because just lighting is not that good. And I think sometimes it's just better just focus on the content itself than maybe display my face. But you know, I can tell that sometimes it's, it's better to have a webcam open just because you can sort of, you know, put a you know, face to the, you know, explanation that's going through and it's just more interactive, right? So throughout this week, it's going to be without a webcam, guys. Hopefully you guys don't mind that. Uh, but let's jump right into it, guys. So shout out to Yair again for an amazing tweet thread here. Um, I actually missed out on the press release yesterday on Friday uh, up until I saw this tweet. It's just been a little bit busy on my end. But uh, so again, shout out to uh, yeah, so Caribou announced initiation of the dose portion of CBO10 Pfizer 1 trial for in second line patients with large B uh, cell uh, lymphoma. So this is the second dosage ex expansion, basically. Uh, if we zoom in here, uh, basically says that uh, CBO10, uh, well, first of all, it's the first allogenic uh, uh, CAR T cell therapy uh, to be evaluated clinically in the second line of C uh, CLBCL uh, patients and next handler, handler update. Handler is they're basically their program name for CBO10. Uh, update plan for second half of 2023. So we'll get a lot more data in the second half of this year. So it could be anywhere from you know July all the way till the end of the year. I suspect we'll be getting data across those months there. But uh, we take a look uh, just you know really really quickly a high level what CBO10 is. Uh, it's Cas9, Chardonnay's our DNA technology proprietary to uh, Caribou. Uh, you know, you're knocking out the T-Rack gene. Um, and basically, uh, with the PD-1 knockout here, you're sort of trying to enhance anti-tumor activity. Again, the point of doing that is uh, for you to have, you know, those, uh, those cells combat the cancer cells a lot longer. So when you have durability of those cells, those cells, those healthy cells basically can combat the cancer cells out of your body longer, right? Without those edits, they sort of die out quickly and then cancer cells keep going through your body. I mean, that's really, you know, uh, uh, ex explain like I'm five exp uh, type of explanation, right? So uh, obviously it's a lot more granular than that. I would take a look at the dose levels. So this is really the one of the most important slides because you see that dose level three, it's 120, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, 10 to the 6, you know, CAR T cells enrolling patients. So we already have data for nine patients here for the first two level dosage. And now we're going with dosage level three, and that's going to be the next uh, dosage uh, cohort that we're talking about. So they're enrolling them as we speak, and we'll be getting data um, in the second half of this year. So next update is second half of 2023. Uh, including data from at least 15 patients from dose escalation with a minimum of six months of follow up. Right. So that's pretty good. Um, and, you know, we take a look at the summary of, you know, a graph. And again, this is not something really, really new, but you can see that the first patient here, patient number one, over 18 months of complete response, basically all green, all good. Uh, patient number four actually is going through his uh, their 12 month, which is still good. Um, and then you had, you know, a couple of patients with progressive disease, but you can play around. That was all with dose level one, right? So you can obviously play around with dosage level. You can even multiply that frequency, right? Right now it's a one-time dosage, a single dosage, which is really what Caribou is always sort of focused on. Uh, but, you know, just like every other technology, you don't have to focus on the end goal right now as shipping your product, you can sort of do this, you know, sort of, you know, not perfect type of product right now. And then over time, as you sort of get your funds, right, the technology, right, get more data, you can perhaps go with a single dosage uh, going forward. But we'll see what happens with the second cohort, the second half of this year, I think we'll have a very clear understanding whether or not Caribou wants to stick with the single dosage. I mean, right now they have above average data um, from everything I've seen and read. Uh, they have pretty good data, uh, acceptable enough for the FDA to sort of you know, approve that in uh, the potential future with a single dosage, the way they're doing it just right now with dosage level one and two. Uh, but who knows with dosage level three, you may get a lot more data 
And of course, with the follow-up data that we see here, maybe things are gonna look good. So we'll see what happens. Um, I just wanted to go over this, guys. Not Nothing revolutionary in terms of press release, but I think it's always good to sort of see where we are at right now with the CRISPR landscape, especially when it comes to Caliboo's extremely big on the CAR T space. So as always, guys, subscribe if you're not. Like this video if you have value. And let me know in the comments, guys, what do you guys think about Caliboo's CBO 10? What do you guys think about the second half of this year? Lots of good things coming this year, guys, in terms of science and data. Hopefully you stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.